over her face. Um, I'm going to figure out what their daily life is like, how they interact with the people around them, what their dreams and goals are, and how they've coped with the fact that they've been quote-unquote different from other people. I hope this documentary series will be educational and inspirational to you. Um, enjoy. Tasks, tasks, excuse me, a lot harder because of your two left hands. Excuse me, sorry. But tasks, harder. Yeah, and you know it's it's just hard. So, would you consider yourself an ambidextrous? You want to learn guitar, correct? Right? Yeah. Have you ever tried before? Yeah. You have? I told you, dude. It doesn't work. Alright, well, lucky for you, I'm an expert guitar player, and we have a guitar here in the studio. Would you like to try playing guitar? Oh, come on. Try, try moving your hand up here. You're right, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Now, when people say, or ask you for directions per se, are you good pointing them in the right direction? I mean, it's still right, but I don't have a right. Can you turn right? Or is, or is everything left-sided to you? Are you a Democrat? What's with the left questions, dude? I don't, I don't... Are you saying that I'm leftist? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This interview's over. What's oh over here? All right. Um. Right. Right. Turn. Perfect. Now I have to ask. What's what's with the box? Well, you see, I just I have this terrible this terrible acne. It just it never goes away, and I just don't want anybody to see my face. My parents said it would be a better idea if I wore the box. You pre-box days of your life. Um, what, how was your life in school? Well, um, kids are terrible. Parents are uh, heavy drinkers ever since I uh, started with the acne. Do you blame yourself for their drinking? Yes. Heavy is it all your fault? It is all my fault. Is they hate me. Problem? They hate you. They hate me. I would too. Can we see your face? No. Please? No. Please. No one's ever seen my face, not in five years. I think it's time to start. 
Nope. <laughs> well, it was good having you today. No, no, no. You're like, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Here we go. All right. Okay. Get, no, no. One foot in front of the other. And who can say? Stephen Shelton, he's, he was born with the birth deficiency of having facial hair. Grow from your jaw? From the, from the bone of my jaw, yes. Now, how has this affected your life thus far? Being that you're how old? I'm 16. 16. So now, how, how have the kids growing up treated you because of this? Well, it's just really weird because, you know, ever since I was born, I had facial hair. And since so since you're infancy, not, you've had yeah, facial hair. Yes, since birth. Out of the womb. Yes. And it's really, it's been really hard. You know, kids always pick on me because I'm so different from everybody. It's just not fair. Now, have kids of the state try to use your facial hair to their advantage? Say, because you look older than 16. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest right now. Yeah, I get that a lot. Have they, have they tried? Asking you to buy cigarettes or to other tobacco products for them. Yeah. And um, just to be perfectly honest, it, it works. I mean, it gets, it gets me friends. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, not too many people, you know, want to be my friend. But if I have to hang out with, you know, younger people and buy them stuff that they can't buy, then it gets me a friend, you know? Let me, this deficiency is raising the crime rate in our cities. Now... Just, just to clarify, do you know of any others with this deficiency of yours? Are there other people that have had facial hair? None to my knowledge. Do you ever get lonely? Now, before I came in here, my parents were telling me that you like uh, the movie Werewolf in London with Michael J. Fox. I'm sitting here today with Dr. Katie Brewer, who specifies in which field? I'm sorry? Gynecology. After the interviews were shot, um, we got some medical advice on how these problems may have come about, how they could be solved, and uh, well, I feel like I should just turn this over to you. <clears throat> Is there any tests that you ran on them in your two and a quarter meetings, such as saliva samples, blood samples, urine samples, anything of this nature? Mostly bat smears. Um, I mean, that's pretty much all I know how to do, so... This... That would work for two of the people that we interviewed, but the third was a man. Face it, Americans are stupid, so... Was he? There's a he? It's not what he looked like. Alright, right. but, what, but what did the pap smears show? Is there any hint to the cause of these deficiencies? Lots of alcohol abuse and... During pregnancy? During pregnancy and... Possible recreational drugs mixed in with tobacco abuse, and these parents did, didn't give these kids a chance. It's a sad story. Um, is there anything that you can do for them, medically speaking? I mean, theoretically, some would say wax on, wax off, with the idea of maybe using those same vices that made them the way they are. Maybe using them now would reverse that. Or maybe they should just use them to end their lives. So it would work anyways. This is a very good point. And uh, on that note, our time is running out. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Katie Brewer, for your insight and your medical knowledge and your help throughout this entire documentary. No, thank you, Michael Becker. Milk, best milkshake that I've ever had. Real tasty, tasty. tasty. real yummy. It's a chili in my tummy, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Made of strawberries, they're delicious. The best berry in all of the land. I love them, I really love them. Ooh, this milkshake tastes so critical. Goes my girlfriend, Hi. she's so pretty. She's about five feet tall. I'll bet she wants some.